Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 4, Lesson 7, and in this lesson we're going to use area models and multiplication to show that if fractions are equivalent. So I want to go ahead and take a look at maybe three problems tonight. We'll do more than the usual because we've got, we want to make sure we're getting a good foundation here when we're dealing with fractions. So let's look at our first problem. Our first problem reads as follows. Let's read together. Each rectangle rep represents one. Oh, that's good to know. The shaded unit fractions have been decomposed into smaller units. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. The first one has been done for you. So let's see what they did in the first one, and that'll give us some clue about how we're supposed to handle our business here. So it looks like we have a rectangle here that represents one. It looks like it's been initially divided in two parts, right? One, two parts, and that one of those parts has been shaded. So I think that this represents one half. And sure enough, when we look below, one half is the first thing. And then they did something that we've been doing uh, in the last couple of lessons. They divided in a different way. They divided into another two parts. So they took the, t the half and they divided that in two to create four parts. And I think in previous lessons, we would have just stopped at that point and said, well, this is one-fourth plus one-fourth, or two-fourths. And that's what they have here. But today, we want to do a slightly different thing. We want to look at the multiplication and say that when we divided the shape in two, each of the pieces became half as, half as, half as large as they were before, and we have twice as many of them. That is to say, instead of one, we have one times two parts, or two. And instead of the whole being divided into two parts, it's been now divided into two times two parts, or four. So let's take a look at how that would play out with uh, item 1b. Okay, I'm going to grab my pen here, and we'll see what we can do. Let's take a look at what 1b looks like. Well, again, we have our whole, and it looks to me like it was divided in two initially, right? And one of those two parts were shaded. So I'm going to say that we have one half initially. And then, let's see, what happened? Well, one half got multiplied by how many pieces? Let's see, we divided it into one, two, three, four tiers. So we have four times as many shaded boxes. That is one times four. And we have four times as many overall boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Instead of two, we now have two times four. And if we multiply 1 times 4, we would get 4. And if we multiply 2 times 4, we would get 8. And sure enough, that gets us the same result that we would have gotten in Lesson 6. We would have done it in Lesson 6 through addition, which is 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8, eventually is 4 8. This time we've gotten there with multiplication. 2 times 4 is our 8, and 1 times 4 is our numerator 4. Same thing though, right? 4 shaded boxes out of 8 boxes total. Awesome. Let's take a look at another problem. We can read our problem together. Let's see. Decompose the shaded fractions into smaller units using the area models. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. Oh, I'm going to underline that. We're using multiplication. Because remember, previously we've been doing addition. So let's take a look at what we have modeled here. Let's see. We have our whole. It's divided into three parts. So I think we are working in thirds. And let's see, how many of these parts are shaded? Oh, it's just this one. So we've got one-third. All right, everybody agree we're looking at one-third? Excellent. Let's see what that equals. Well, I'm going to do the simplest division first, which is I'm going to divide our unit, our uh, model here in two. Right? Divided in two with my red line. Let's see. So where we used to have one unit, now we have, we've divided in two, so we have one times two units. One times two units. Excellent. And where we used to have three in the denominator, that is our diagram had been divided into three parts, now we've cut this in half and we've divided it into one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So that is, right, it used to be three, and now it's three times two parts. And we can go ahead and do that multiplication. Let's see, one times two is two, and three times two is six. Excellent, is six. And so now we found out that one-third this one-third, is the same as two-sixth. One-two out of one-two-three-four-five-six. And that strikes me as perfectly plausible. That's exactly how we would have done it in previous lessons. In lesson six, we would have done that as addition, right? One-sixth plus one-sixth would give us two-sixth. This time we're going to do it with multiplication, which is we multiply the numerator and the denominator by two because we've divided it by two. 
and we end up with 2 sixths. Excellent. Let's take a look at one more problem. Problem 3a. We are going to draw three different area models to represent one-fourth by shading. Then decompose the shaded fraction into eighths, twelfths, and sixteenths. Now we're just going to do 3a, so it's eighths. So the first thing we have to do is we have to do the first part, which is to draw an area model to represent one-fourth. All right, well that I think we can do. So let's see, we draw our area model. Let's see, and we're, we're doing one-fourths. Okay, so we need to divide ours into four parts. And let's see, one-fourth means we need to just shade one of them, right? So we are going to go ahead and shade in that one. And that means, I believe, we have one-fourth. That is our model of one-fourth. And now we're supposed to do the next part, which is to decompose the shaded fraction into eighths. All right, so let's see. If we're going to get eight parts of this, it looks to me like we're going to have to divide it by two. I'm going to slice it in the middle by two, and that will give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That will give us eighths. So let's see. Now that we've done that, let's see what we how we got there. Where we used to have one part <clears throat> in the numerator, now we have two parts. So that's one times two. And where we used to have four parts, one, two, three, four, in the denominator, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Well, that is simply four times two. So it looks to me like we have two eighths. And if we count those up, it looks like one, two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks pretty good. And that means I think we've done 3a, which is to divide our one-fourth into eighths. We've decomposed our fourths into eighths. And I will leave it to you to do b and c, twelfths and sixteenths. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. We'll see you next time.